So let's take a look at the surface anatomy here in the hip and pelvis. So in the uh, clinical um, exam video, we show how the iliac crest here can be palpated, the greater trochanter can be palpated here, the anterior superior iliac spine here, posterior superior iliac spine, and the ischial tuberosity. Let, let's remove the skin layer now, get a better look. So posteriorly, we have the gluteus maximus, gluteus medi medius, and then as we come anterior, tensor fascia. And we'll highlight each of these muscles now. Um, so uh, let's just start all the way anteriorly here at the pubic symphysis. So here we are oriented to the frontal projection. Here's a pubic symphysis, uh, which in many patients should be palpable. Coming up here is the inguinal ligament. Um, and that comes all the way up to the anterior superior iliac spine, which is uh, this anterior portion of the iliac crest, which is highlighted in green. Um, the iliac crest here is usually palpable. What you don't see here is the insertion of the abdominal muscles uh, coming from the abdominal wall onto the iliac crest. But what you do see is the origin of many of the muscles around the upper thigh, the tensor fascia lata muscle, the gluteus medius, and deep to that is a gluteus minimus, and then posteriorly the um, gluteus maximus muscle. So, um, you know, the, the, the abductors or gluteus medius and minimus are key structures in performing uh, abduction, right? So, uh, this is an important uh, function for you be, to be able to stand uh, properly and not have a so-called Trendelenburg sign or Trendelenburg gait. Okay, so your abductors, or here you can see your gluteus medius, medius and deep to that, the minimus, help to provide that um, stability. Um, uh, there's a distinction made in the clinical portion of the video between the bony pelvis um, and the actual uh, greater trochanter, the femur, and then the hip joint. So when patients often are saying that my hip is hurting, you have to distinguish, are they talking about back in here? Uh, and I point to the gluteus maximus, but I really mean in this general vicinity, uh, or do they mean you know, pain up around the iliac crest? In this area? Do they even mean something in the groin, uh, the pubic symphysis, or your adductor insertions here? Um, so it could be, or it could, like I said, it could be the greater trochanter of the femur, which is palpable right here. So let's remove um, some of the um, some of the muscles here. So the gluteus maximus, uh, tensor fascia lata removed here. We're left with the, the gluteus medius and minimus um, shown here, inserting onto the greater trochanter of the femur. So here is the greater trochanter of the femur, okay, highlighted in green. And that is an insertion point uh, and origin point of multiple muscles, right? So you have the abductors inserting onto it. You have the short external rotators uh, posteriorly, the um, uh, piriformis muscle posteriorly. These are muscles you'll encounter more when you actually do some surgical approaches to the hip. Uh, not really palpable, but the greater trochanter certainly is palpable, and it is a potential location for some pathology um, uh, due to the uh, tensor um, uh, fascia that uh, runs overlying it. You also have gluteal insertion. So many times when patients say they're having hip pain, they may be pointing actually, or you may be able to elicit pain at the greater trochanter, whereas the hip joint itself, as we know, is much deeper. So the joint itself is really in here. Here is your ball and socket joint, and uh, you know you can see the issue uh, femoral ligaments here. Um, and that is really, if we go back to the frontal projection, that hip joint really is kind of more in the groin, right? Now, I did put the um, external iliac artery and superficial femoral artery uh, here just for uh, giving you a landmark because oftentimes you can palpate the femoral pulse here and get a 
reasonable sense of where you are in space um, with the hip joint relative to the uh, palpable uh, pulse of the femoral. So let's come around posteriorly on the iliac crest. Uh, so again, here's the posterior ilium. The uh, gluteus maximus has been uh, removed. Uh, we see actually just the minimus here. The medius is also removed. And um, so here's the posterior superior iliac spine. So here is a sort of posterior projection as if the patient you're examining the patient is prone. So posterior superior iliac spine, you can palpate here. This is a common location um, for, for instance, um, um, bone marrow aspirates, um, for example. Now, the ischial tuberosity is actually even, uh, is far deeper and more, um, and more distal. So I'm going to continue to remove some of the muscles to give you a better sense. So here's your ischial tuberosity. It's all the way down here. And if we build back some of the muscles, you'll see that it is the insertion point of hamstring muscles right here. So your hamstrings originate on the ischial tuberosity. And if you potentially have a hamstring rupture, for example, you may be able to palpate a defect in this area. But this is pretty far distance from the um, uh, iliac crest and the posterior superior iliac spine. All right, so with the hip exam, a couple of uh, surface anatomy points to be aware of. So uh, one of the things is distinguish where you are in, in the pelvis versus the femur. So um, the pelvis, the iliac crest is the bony prominence. You kind of see I'm rolling up and over it. And that comes down to a little bit of a point right here where you can kind of feel that it's a little bit of a prominence. This is the anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS. So that's still part of the pelvis. And if you follow this back, this is going to be the iliac crest. And um, the iliac crest is an insertion point for the abdominal muscles, for the uh, tensor fascia lata, for the gluteal muscles. Uh, and then coming down to the ASIS, you also have the origin of the uh, sartorius muscle. Um, and uh, dropping down here, you're now going to distinguish the pelvis from the greater tuberosity. So the greater tuberosity is a part of the femur. Okay? And when a lot of people say they're having hip pain, they may actually be pointing to this spot. Uh, which is really the lateral side of the hip. So I think when people are saying, I have hip pain, they a lot of times are pointing to the greater trochanter of the femur. It's important to distinguish uh, the pelvis up here from the femur here. And then the hip joint is actually occur is in the groin. So when people are having groin pain, one of the reasons could be hip joint pain. Now let's just slide over to the model here. All right, so... I have it oriented in this direction as uh, he's lying supine. So here's the hemipelvis. This is that iliac crest I was palpating. Here's the ASIS, all right? So this is that prominence that I was saying you can feel where the sartorius comes down. Um, the AIIS, or anterior inferior iliac spine, is a little bit harder to palpate. It's a little bit deeper. The sartorius is kind of in your way here. And this is where the rectus femoris uh, originates. Now drop down to the greater trochanter. So I said that this is actually part of the femur. When people say they're having hip pain, they oftentimes are feeling pain in this area. Uh, now remember, it's a femur. So if you roll internally, externally rotate the femur, you can often feel your finger rolling back up and over this. And that's how you can confirm, especially if you're in the lateral position, which I'll show as well. Um, and this is your hip joint. So remember I said the hip joint is in that groin. It's not over here. So a lot of people point to hip pain and you realize you're on their greater trochanter, but hip joint pain would be more in the groin here. So here's the ASIS, greater trochanter, hip joint is actually medial to both of those here. So we're in the lateral position now. Patient's lying uh, laterally, the head is this way, the feet are down this way, and this is the right hip um, or right femur up in the air here. So um, again, you can palpate the uh, iliac crest coming around and it's going to come from the ASIS which you can't see there around the iliac crest 
to the PSIS, or posterior superior iliac spine, which is a little bit of a bony prominence back here. Uh, and you can see sometimes uh, the, the soft tissues might dimple a little bit in this spot, you can see, and then just below that is your PSIS. And here again, we can identify our greater trochanter, which is um, right about here. And if I'm not sure, I can rotate the femur internally and externally, and I can feel, like I showed in the bone model, the greater trochanter uh, kind of rolling past. Uh, it is a site where you can get inflammation, uh, you can get tendonitis, uh, there's a lot of insertion uh, of uh, the gluteal muscles. So you have, again, the iliac crest up here, the gluteal muscles are coming down and inserting onto the greater trochanter. Um, so it's an important uh, uh, bony landmark for uh, abduction of the hip. So what you can do in this position also is ask the patient to abduct. So why don't you lift your, lift your leg up and see this is hip abduction. And you can certainly check against resistance, but this is checking those gluteal muscles. You can bring the leg back down. It's checking the gluteal muscles inserting on the, uh, on the greater trochanter. So uh, this is just demonstrating on the bone model. We have our hip joint uh, in the lateral position. So again, if you have the uh, cover cut back here, you can see the iliac crest is up here. Greater trochanter is here. Iliac crest comes down to the PSIS. And on the model, you can see this is the iliac crest coming down to the PSIS. Okay, and if you imagine my hand are the gluteal muscles, gluteal, uh, gluteus medius and, and, and minimus, uh, that's coming off of the uh, outer table of the uh, iliac crest and inserting onto the greater trochanter. So here's your greater trochanter. And you can certainly, like I said, you can internally, externally rotate so you can sort of like palpate and recognize that you're over the greater trochanter. And if you ask the patient to abduct, they're bringing the femur up this way. And so what we showed um, um, before, and that's uh, demonstrating the activity of your gluteal muscles, and uh, again, they're going from the pelvis to the femur, and they're creating abduction for you. Uh, one other uh, bony landmark uh, to keep in mind uh, in certain patients, uh, if you're suspecting a hamstring injury, uh, is the ischial tuberosity. So here we are, posterior part of the pelvis. Uh, the ischial tuberosity is this structure. It's not a very pointy structure, but it is a little bit of a bony prominence. We actually sit on our ischial tuberosity. So it's a, uh, it's a spot where you kind of uh, put pressure on when you're sitting, especially on a hard surface, you'll feel it. Uh, and as I said, the uh, hamstring origin does come from the ischial tuberosity. So in some patients with uh, hamstring injury, you could potentially have pain or even elicit a defect in this vicinity. And uh, uh, I think a lot of people get a little bit confused with the PSIS, which is which is again on the model, it's here, on um, patient it's here, and the ischial tuberosity, you can see how far down it is. So the ischial tuberosity is like all the way down here, and it's a bony prominence. If you think about the bony part of your pelvis that you're sitting on, it's really way down here. And this is something best examined uh, with a patient actually prone, um, if you need to get in there and compare to the other side and see if you feel that there's a hamstring injury, for instance, or an avulsion fracture. So uh, the hip is a ball and socket joint, right? So if we want to check hip range of motion, uh, we can check hip flexion, right? Hip extension, and on the table supine, you can really only go to about neutral. If you want to extend further, you'd have to have the patient lay on their side or lay prone or stand. Uh, the other thing we can uh, check with hip range of motion is internal and external rotation. So keep in mind, this motion is, is hip motion, okay? So this is external rotation of the hip, and this is internal rotation of the hip, okay? So when I'm doing this, I'm rotating the hip. I can also do this with the uh, patient supine. So sometimes in hospitalized patients, if we're checking to see if there's some pathology in the hip that might be elicited with hip motion, we might literally roll the leg back and forth. This is hip rotation, okay? It's all hip rotation. Another motion you can do is adduction and abduction. So passively, I'm now abducting, okay? And then passively, I'm adducting. And you can also 
ask the patient to do this actively, and then you can resist them to check and see if there's uh, weakness or if it elicits pain. Um, in the hip, there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of ligament exam that we do. The hip joint ligaments are particularly strong, and um, uh, on standard physical exam, we're usually not checking for uh, instability. Uh, if a patient has a true hip dislocation or serious problem, uh, we potentially could check that under anesthesia.